Hey everybody, how you doing? Today we're going to talk a lot about well, just about everything because today is a question and answer and talking about some of the comments and all kinds of other stuff. I'm even going to take the drone up and let's just go ahead and get started. Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Rusty Nelson and welcome. Today we're going to do comments, questions, answers, all those things, mostly the things that you've brought up down below in the comments or questions. Also, I'm going to talk about a few other things. I'm going to take the drone up and talk a little bit about solar panels, that type of thing. And, uh, you know, I also talk a lot about uh, restaurant reviews, Medicare, uh, although I'm not a specialist, real estate, everything and might have something to do with things outside the villages also. Sometimes we take adventures outside the bubble, yeah, and uh, it's time not to be afraid. We are going to go outside the bubble. And I think I'll touch a little bit on pickleball and start getting a little bit more into that since people seem to have questions about that, and I'll see how far we can get into it. Also, uh, I started doing a bunch of shorts, those little one-minute things, and I think what I'm going to do is start answering a bunch of the questions on those since a lot of the answers are only a minute and a lot of people seem to have an interest in, it, in that. With that, let's go ahead and get started on the first question, comment, or answer, or one of those things. Here we go. This is something that is near and dear to my heart, and this is the deed restrictions. My basic philosophy is these deed restrictions are not... Uh, they're not really that hard to follow. And they make the villages look the way it does. So if you come here and you like the way the villages looks, you like it that there's not the Oscar Mayer Wiener truck parked in your front yard, or Joe's been working on an old rusted out commercial truck for three weeks, and it's spilling oil all over the place, that your next door neighbor doesn't have giant metal things all over the yard and, and that type of thing, then this is the place for you. If you need those type of things, I, I would suggest you probably move someplace else because when you come here, you are supposed to read those deed restrictions. You know what's going on. You like the way the area looks. The minute you put some kind of big thing in your yard, you are saying to your neighbor, as far as I'm concerned, F you, I don't care what we agreed to. I'm moving in. I'm bullying my way in and I'm going to do whatever I want to do. So. That's my opinion. I'm sure everybody else has their opinion, but basically you've signed that contract with your neighbors. Hey, I'm going to live that way. Now, this first question deals with uh, something that is directly noted in the deed restrictions, and I'll read from District 13. But uh, Fink GX writes, can I work on my 22-foot Sea Ray boat in my driveway or in my backyard? And the answer is no. And here's exactly kind of I'll summarize some of it, but talk about others. And it's an Article 13. This is District 13. Each of the districts is different. It only takes a second to read these folks. You supposedly already read them before you moved here. Um, uh, all outside structures for storage and utility purposes must be permanently constructed in additions and of like construction is originally constructed. So you can add on to your house. You just need to get anything you do outside approved by ARC. And it's not hard to do, it only takes a second. You can even just walk up to their office and say, hey, can I do this? And they will help you out. Uh, so uh, no vehicles incapable of operation shall be stored on any home site, nor shall any junk vehicles or equipment be kept in, kept on any home site. No owner of any home site shall repair or restore any motor vehicles, trailers, aircraft, recreational vehicles, or other vehicles on any portion of any home site or on dedicated or reserved areas, except for emergency repairs, and then only to the extent necessary to enable movement or proper re or move to a proper repair facility. So. I used to have my real estate license, and some of you guys have heard me say this before. We used to go into a neighborhood, and if we were selling a house, we'd even go as far as some of those things to ask neighbors to clean up their yards. Please don't. We're having an open house. Please don't park vehicles on the street or leave them out in the driveway. And the reason is, is because that devalues your home. Trust me, I just went to an open house with a friend, and next door was a yard that probably had 
20 of those little figurines, concrete things, plastic things. And I almost gagged when I looked at it and I said something to the real estate agent. I said, boy, I'll bet you're happy with tchotchke land next door. And she goes, oh my God. She goes, the people don't realize that it's probably devalued their home about 10 grand. Their words, not mine. And I would have to agree with that because I wouldn't have wanted to moved into there. It was a nice home. I would have put a bid in on it, but not living next to that because what it tells me is that person is somebody that is just going to disregard everything and they really don't care about their neighbor and respect that. Put it in your backyard, put it where people can't see it. You can make tchotchke land back there if you want and you can have a happy time with all your creatures and concrete figurines and everything else, just not where everybody else has to look at them. Anyway, there's your answer about the boat. On to the next one. Oh my God, crack me up. I just went back and looked at the video of that last question. If you guys didn't notice it, <laughs> thanks for watching me instead of what was going on in the picture in the background, but it was uh, the birds were actually mating back there. So I decided to take that off and we'll put something else on there. Now, if you're wondering what's on there, they're just like screensaver type of things and stuff like that going on. But uh, that was a video, a HD video, some birds or something, I thought, but I didn't realize they were actually going to be mating back there. So on to, on to the next question. <laughs> oh, God, it cracked me up. I'm just leaving it in there. So anyway, uh, D, me, key, four, three, one, five, whatever this is, the, uh, it's great information. I was talking about my second lifestyle visit. I'll make sure I put that link down below. This is great information. Just starting to explore retirement communities in Central Florida. Love the villages. But uh, probably more than uh, what I will use or even want to pay as a single gal. Considering a few other large retirement communities in surrounding areas, Stone Creek, Spoose Creek, uh, and I will check out other videos. Yeah, it's, it's not for everybody. I mean, you can buy a home here for, um, you know, 300 grand, you can get, get you know, or around 300 grand. I know there's one for sale across the street from me. I think it's going to go for around 350 or something like that. But here's the, here's the thing is you don't move here because of the physical home. Um, I moved here, and I can tell you my philosophy. When I started looking, actually before I was 60 years old, I started looking and I said, you know, what do I want out of life? I, I want to keep um, physically active. And as I become non-physically active, so to speak, I want to be able to access a lot of other things. And I'll give you, for instance, I went to another community where the salesperson, it was fairly large uh, and newer, and the salesperson said, oh, yeah, well, we have uh, a lot of uh, activities here and clubs. And, I, and he said, do you realize there's over 30 clubs here that you can sign up for? And I kind of went, 30? The Villages has over 3,000. And it's, to me, for my life, it was part of finding a place where I could explore other things, um, anywhere from you know groups that meet together about music or play instruments or go on trips or you know go to Disneyland or whatever that may be. There's clubs that are go on cruises. There's clubs that paint rocks. There's clubs that are shooting clubs. There's pickleball tournaments. All types of things. And I knew that I like playing golf. So if I want to go play golf, I'm not, I don't have three golf clubs. I got like 700, seven to 800 holes of golf to go play. I can, you know, it's huge. And I like that. You know, some people may never leave their home. So yeah, I think it's great to go explore other things in other areas, no doubt. Uh, you just have to figure out what you're looking for. And I, one of the real estate agents here explained it best to me in just a couple of words. He said, because I kind of said, oh, all the houses are kind of the same and, you know, they're, they're kind of close together. He says, Rusty, people don't come to the villages to live inside their house. And I find that basically to be true. Um, most people want to live outside the house and are very active. And for those people that do live inside their, inside their home or, you know, they're what you would call homebodies, um, 
they're at any moment they can access these different things, and it's all included within the villages. So that's it. Yeah, I, I would highly suggest to go look at other places. Uh, in in fact, I'm going. You may have seen Sonia in a couple other videos here. I'm meeting her up around Charleston, up in that area, and maybe I'll do a video of of that. I I don't know, but. You know, and she's going to go look up around that area. Go look at other places because you definitely want to be satisfied where you're moving. That's it. On to the next one. Here we go. Just a, actually a couple of questions here, and I'll try to group them all together. And they deal with actually, like the last question, visiting the villages. And what they call that visit is a lifestyle visit. And I'll tell you really quick what I did. I, and you, it might explain some of the confusion here. I actually had three lifestyle visits. Let me read part of these questions and then we'll go ahead and go into that. Uh, Rusty, thank you for showing Courtyard Villa. Great information. Asking about the lifestyle visit. I don't believe I've seen anyone else on your YouTube showing that. Yeah, so each one of those lifestyle visits, I actually went in and showed the house and what I was doing. If you haven't watched from the beginning of my channel and you're looking at moving into the villages, you might want to start from the very beginning because I start with the actual phone call and that's something you do to do the lifestyle. So you'll get all that information you'll actually hear because when I called, I had absolutely no idea. So you get to listen in on that conversation. Anyway, um, lifestyle visit. I highly suggest people go for it. They won't regret it. And they're talking about the lifestyle visit. And the next person, uh, Lawrence, wrote in, how do you sign up? You just go to villages.com, thevillages.com, go to their website, and it'll say, get information, and go go back and listen to my first uh, videos, and, and you'll actually hear it beforehand. They're very low-pressured. Uh, great experience uh, for me. It's it's not like your typical high-pressured, uh, you got to go, you got to live here, you got to buy now. It's, hey, if you want to buy, I'll help you out, whatever. Just go listen to the videos. Anyway, the next one says, I'm a little confused about the lifestyle visit. And basically, they're asking, how many can you go on? Well, what happened to me was I went on my first lifestyle visit, the standard one, the phone call your heel here. And then I decided to go on a second one, a second lifestyle visit, which I did. And I also rented a home in, in let's see, it was a month of April, I believe, Great month to, to be down here, April, and I rented for a month, came down and rented a home, and I go through that whole thing about how to do the rentals and everything else. And then <clears throat> what happened was, is my home was coming up, the area that I wanted to move into was coming up, and I wanted to be down here when they released that property. So I was on my way down here, I was driving down here, and I literally called the villages up and I said, look, I'm coming down here. I don't even have a place to stay, but I'm driving down here from Philly. Do you have a lifestyle that may open up at the last minute? And they said, no, we have absolutely nothing. But she said, let me take your name down and I'll call you just in case. And I'm not saying this will happen with everybody, but I did. And I, literally, as I was driving down, they called me back about an hour later and they said they just had something open up. Somebody left early. Would you like to take it? And I said, yes, yeah, sure. And that's how I ended up getting my last lifestyle visit. Anyway, so that's it. Very easy people to deal with. Go ahead and go over to their website. If you have any interest, they're happy to talk to you about anything. If you, I would highly suggest you do that because you get a golf cart with it and you get to play golf and all those other things that are included. I'm telling you right now, it's low pressure. Go for it if you have any interest at all. On to the next question. This next one's really uh, easy and quick, and just, just jump right into it. Um, your home is lovely, Rusty. Well, thank you very much. Uh, what kind of camera are you using? I would like one. I use, when I'm walking around handheld, I use a GoPro. I think it is a 8, but the GoPros are up to 11 now. I have been looking into the Osmo Action 4, which is brand new. And if you're not going to do any HDMI out, in other words, streaming or anything like that, that may be the way to go. I'll put both links down below for you. As far as this camera goes that you're looking into, it is a Canon uh, Mark IV, which I kept. I used to use that in my photography days, but now it's kind of stationary up there. 
I do take it down sometimes when I'm going on trips and stuff like that. Anyway, that's it. And of course, then I have the um, drone that I use also. But anyway, on to the next one. Here's some stuff dealing with, I'll kind of lump it all together, pools, solar panels, bird cages, that type of thing. And I'll go ahead and take the drone up here for this first question. Great video for those considering a move to the villages. Can homes have in-ground pools if they are screened in? Now, to my knowledge, I've never seen a pool that's not screened in or hot tub type of thing. I don't have a screen on my back deck back there. Um, but most of that is to keep the critters out. <clears throat> and I, I mean, this is Florida. We do have alligators and turtles and birds, but also to keep the bugs out. Now to talk about bugs, I expected when I moved here to be inundated with bugs. In fact, it was one of my big worries. But on my lifestyle visit, I went, wow, I really haven't experienced anything with bugs. So except for mosquitoes at night, that type of thing, uh, my bug experience has been extremely limited, probably less here than the bugs that are up in Kennett Square. And that's the truth. Now, Mosquitoes at night, yes, there are some, and I'm sure it's a lot more comfortable when the area is screened, is screened in. On the last video, you may have seen what look like solar panels, and I'll kind of deal with the next question here, what look like solar panels, and that, uh, that was not actually a solar panel, that was solar to heat the water for the pool. Now you go, well, it's Florida, why would you need that? Well, it actually, I talked with Bob and Liz, and they have uh, the, those type of panels on top of their house to heat the water, and they kind of extend the useful life of the pool an extra month on either side of where it is, and it helps to heat the hot tub and that type of thing. Maybe I'll get into pools later on, but dealing with solar panels, it's, uh, Gummies writes, can you install a Tesla solar, solar roof or solar panels I guess is ever considered, I guess is me ever considered, and I'll tell you kind of my theory about it. For me, uh, I suspect no, because they want their electrical electric income. No, I don't think that's it at all. In fact, electricity is fairly cheap here, and I think that's one of the reasons you don't see that many solar panels. And the solar panels, uh, there's a lot to consider with that around here, and I'm just going to cover on this briefly. If people want to put stuff down in the comments, please do your experience if you do have solar panels. But being that the um, electricity is fairly cheap here, and I guess I answered that, yes, you can have the Tesla stuff on here. If Tesla folks want to chime in, please do, but you can have solar panels here my thought process on the solar panels is one, electricity is fairly cheap here. So um, the solar panel thing isn't like out of a necessity type of thing. Also, you have to deal a lot with wind and the roof and that type of thing. Me personally, this is just my personal kind of um, opinion is that I really don't want to do anything to my roof because there are high wind conditions. Now, I don't know whether they affect solar panels or not around here or whether they are easy to insure. I have no idea. But with that in mind, when your roof gets to be 10, 15 years old, the insurance companies do start looking at you having to replace your roof. Now, I'm sure it costs more to replace your roof when you have solar panels on there. Also, you have to clean solar panels, so that's not included in the cost in solar panels. I'm going to get a little bit into solar panels, not too much. Also, the money that you have to output if you have to put any out, I don't know where we are now with the government contributing to that. But also, I'd rather take that money invested in the market and reap the rewards of that, especially with T-bills and interest rates so high, that's one thing. Uh, and there, there's a bunch of other stuff. As far as the Tesla thing goes, for me, personally, I like to travel outside the area a lot, and I really don't want to worry about plugging my car in. Plus that, I also consider um, where the, the uh, elements come from to create the batteries and where those batteries are going to be disposed of later and what we have to do for that. And that's a whole... 
thing. I think it's a, a wash situation. If you like the, the Tesla and it's a cool thing for you, I say go for it. If you want to put that stuff on your roof, go ahead and put it on your roof, go for it, that type of thing. I don't want to get into a big debate about it. But for me, if I want to go travel five, six, seven hundred miles in, in, in tomorrow, I want to be able to do it and not worry about it. And since I'm a one car person, that's it. The Tesla thing just doesn't work for me. But that's it. That's for me. I'm sure it's different for everybody else. I hope that answered some stuff. On to the next question. I am out here at right by Sawgrass here, and this is my postal station here. And these are the stickers that uh, they're talking about. And it cracked me up because I, I couldn't believe I saw a Bucky's one. But they, I, I, I think it's one of those things where if you look at the golf carts and stuff, people put stickers on about where they're from and that kind of stuff, or their old license plates from what state they're from, that type of thing. But also, people can look at this and they can remember exactly where their mailbox is. Now, for me, I got lucky. I got a really easy mailbox to, to see. But also, one thing, you know, I want to say while I'm here, make sure that you only put outgoing mail into these mailboxes right here with the the, uh, the slot with the yellow on it because if you put it into other places, they're not going to go out because if you come over here, you can look and you can see that they're four different things. So anyway, that's it. I uh, hope that answers that question, but that's all I got on that one. Here's a, another question that deals with the deed restrictions, covenants. Now, I, I, anybody can look these up. You just go to the districtgov.org and you can find out information about these because it's important that you read the ones that deal with your district specifically because they do change. And there's a lot of difference between District 1 and 2 and 13, 14. So it's definitely you need to read your deed restrictions. I don't know how many times I got to say this, but you got to read these things. It's really important. So here's the question. One more question. Like Sonia, Sonia came down here to visit and she was looking at a house and she has a dog, so she wants a fence. Now there's a difference between a fence and a wall, but I'll read this. Like Sonia, we're looking for a home with a fence. We noticed in your video not only did your home have a wrought iron fence overlooking the pond, but you also had a fence on both sides. I have a, a wall, dividing wall on both sides. In these instances where the fence is allowed in the fence provided by the villages, or do you have to pay for it on top of the cost of a home? Let me read my deed restrictions, and this is for 13. Here we go. Section seven, no fence, hedge, wall, or other dividing uh, da -da -da, structure or maintained on any home site except for the walls and fencing originally constructed by the developer. In order to maintain a visible roadway, no bush, shrub, tree, or other similar plant may be placed within the road wide of way without the developer's written uh, uh, consent. So ba basically what we're saying here is no fence or wall can be constructed. But uh, read on in section eight. No outbuilding, tent, shack, detached garage, trailer, shed, utility building, or temporary building of any kind shall be erected, except temporarily only for construction purposes. No arbor, trellis, gazebo, uh, pergola, awning, fence, Barrier or wall structure of any kind nature shall be placed on the property without the prior written approval of the developer, which this is ARC. So there are, I've seen plenty of trellises. I was told by one person that they did get their trellis approved by ARC. It was in the plan and they approved it. Um, planting, uh, painting, natural concrete and stuff that doesn't pertain to that. The biggest thing I can say is... <clears throat> I have seen white fences in people's backyards that lead up to empty areas. Now, I have no idea whether they were given permission to put those fences in, but there was like four people in one small area that had these fences. They looked like they were for some type of small dog, I guess, or children or 
grandkids, I have no idea, but why you would have your kid out in the yard without without watching it. Here's the thing. For those of you that think you're going to, especially in some of these open areas, leave your smaller pets running around out back, I would not do it personally because I have personally seen right out in my back bald eagles come right down on things the size of ducks and such. And also, those gators, the larger gators, can come right over those fences. It's unbelievable how high they can actually come right out of the water to get food. It's, it's pretty incredible. So remember, this is a real nature area. So don't think you're going to fence things in. With that said, there are villas. If you look at, I think it's my third lifestyle visit, if you look on there, there's a place I was at um, over in Alden, which is near Brownwood, with a huge area in the back that's fenced off. It was a corner lot. So you need to speak to your sales agent, and they will track them down. Or you can just look on the Village's website, and you can use that in the filters as you search for properties. I hope that helps, but it's definitely something you have to research for a specific property and you have to look at where that backs up. But in general, the answer is no, you can't construct things. Um, you could be forced to take it down if some neighbor didn't like it or it wasn't approved. So like I said, always get things approved by ARC. A short time ago, I did a whole uh, video on the dog parks and temperature of the pavements. And I still see people walking their dogs around in the middle of the day on the pavement. Now, Here's, here's the question. I'm going to show you a clip where I actually got a laser temperature of the ground. But here's, here's what somebody wrote. I live in Alaska, and we're planning on moving to the villages next year. Honestly, I never thought about walking our dogs on the sidewalks and the heat. My poor dogs are going to have to get, are going to get a rude awakening, and us too, laugh out loud. Uh, I've lived in Alaska my whole life, and there's snakes. I think I'd rather see a Kodiak uh, brown bear than a snake. We're excited and scared about the uh, big move. Now, don't be excited and scared about the big move. Hopefully, you took a uh, lifestyle visit, came down here, and saw the place. I really, really hope so. But let me play this really quick. This is me taking the temperature, I'm not quite sure, maybe midday, uh, down by the postal office, right after I got done seeing somebody walking their dog here. Check this out really quick. I'm over here at St. Catherine. I figured this would be a good thing to take a look at. So a lot of us take our animals out and they walk them along this area. So let's see what the temperature is here. 136, and this is in the shade. So basically almost 140 degrees, 136, 140 degrees. And this is kind of a overcast day. There you go. It takes less than 60 seconds for your dog's paws to get burnt. Now, you may not even see it because they'll blister under those pads. If it's bad enough, those pads will come off and there's nothing but raw skin underneath there. And you've pretty much done some damage to your animal for a long time. I took some temperatures also at like 9, 30, 10 in the morning, and it was already about 115 degrees on the um, the roadway. So please, folks, um, here's also, let me show you this. There's some pad covers and stuff like that on Amazon, which can really help your animal out. The concrete gets to be, oh, 120 degrees or so, 115 degrees easily. And they say, if you can't put your foot down or your hand down and hold it there for a minute, how do you expect your dog to do it? So anyway, Check it out and check out these pad covers if you just have to take your dog or cross the, the roads or whatever. Take a look at those on Amazon and see whether they'll help your animal out or, at all. But they're not going to yell and scream. They're just going to go at it because they figure you're going to take care of them. Anyway, on to the next one. Maybe the last one. I don't know. we got to be getting close. All right. This is going to be the last one, I absolutely promise, and it's kind of an important one. I have a few suggestions regarding this, and here's the question. Are there any urgent care walk-in clinics? And the answer is absolutely yes. Now, 
I know this personally because all of a sudden I was down here and no doctors or anything. All my doctors are up north. In fact, I'm still working on trying to find one, one down here that I like. And I ended up getting pneumonia. Long story short, all of a sudden I found myself waking up one morning and going, wow, I can hardly breathe and trying to find a place that was open was kind of a nightmare because it was the weekend. But anyway, I did. And I'm just going to shoot up a picture here off of Google. And most of these red blobs are urgent care. The thing is, listen up here, find out way before you have to go to one. Look them up. Find one that's 24 hours so you know you can get there or has hours seven days a week. And because you don't want to, I don't go to the emergency room for everything. But with that said, try to find one that's got hours. Also, you want to make sure they got x ray, so on and so on, and find out what they're capable of before you actually have to go because it was actually a nightmare. I can tell you this if you're going to show up early in the morning, right out of the chute, there's going to be a lot of people trying to get in there. And that's the way it was with me. I found out that I was like number 20 in a line. But they actually did a pretty good job of getting me in there. The thing was, is I wasn't diagnosed with pneumonia, and I actually had pneumonia. So I ended up in the emergency, um, right, a UF Health, the emergency uh, outpatient type thing, which was right across from Brownwood. Now, with that said, they did a wonderful job. The folks in there were great. The doctor was great. But here's the thing. Bring your meds with you because you want the doctor to see them. Don't just say, oh, I'm taking this or I'm taking that. Bring them with you because especially if it's something where you got to get transferred to a hospital, you want to make sure you got your meds with you. Also, uh, the dosage, dosage and everything. And don't be afraid to ask to see the doctor if there's something wrong when you go in there because most likely if it's not something urgent, in the emergency type thing, there you won't even see a doctor. With me, I refused to leave until I got to see the doctor. When the doctor came in, he looked at my meds, he looked at the doses, and he said, you're being double dosed. He said, that's why your blood pressure is so high. Because if I hadn't done that, I would have gone back home and double dosed myself all over again. So you really have to kind of look out for yourself. And hopefully, if you have a primary doctor down here, you let them know because it's really important that they manage that health, even if you're going to urgent care or the emergency room. Anyway, with that said, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you would, please take a second if you got this far and just kind of click that like button, subscribe button, something down there that will help the channel along because it takes a lot of effort to put these together. and. Like I always say, I will see you either down here in the villages or I'll see you back here on YouTube. Have a wonderful day, and I guess that's it. Bye.